Hey everyone! In the previous video we checked the capacity of the beam and we verified if the beam is safe to carry a given load. But what happens if the load applied is greater than the beam capacity? Say for example, we increase the dead load and the live load. That gives us a 363 kN applied moment which is greater than the moment capacity. So what we can do, the first option is increase the beam depth. Because if we increase the beam depth, we increase the moment arm, thus increasing the moment capacity. So let's try doing that. Let's increase to 600. So by increasing the depth to 600 mm, we get an increased moment capacity of 385 kN, which is greater than the applied moment, and that is good. But what if we have space constraint or headroom limitation that will not allow us to increase the beam depth? The second option that we can do is to add reinforcement at the top section to carry that excess applied moment. In this vid, we are going to design a beam to satisfy the applied load by designing a double reinforced beam. So let me just do a quick review. When additional rebars are added at top section, we introduce an additional compression force C prime, which is equal to AS prime times FS prime. AS prime is the area of reinforcement at top section, and FS prime is a tensile stress at top section. C prime is located at D prime, which is the depth of your top reinforcement and C prime to T is at distance D minus D prime. So when we add reinforcement at top, we also must add equivalent reinforcement at the bottom. This is to ensure equilibrium of forces because summation of all forces must be equal to zero, therefore T must be equal to C plus C prime. If the moment capacity of a double reinforced beam is calculated by taking the moments above T, which is equal to C times the moment arm D minus A over 2 plus C prime times the moment arm D minus D prime. So that gives you the nominal moment capacity. In order to calculate the moment capacity, we need to find the value of A which is dependent on the value of C. We also need to find the value of Fs and Fs prime, which is based on the strain value, and the strain value is also dependent on C. The strain value tells us whether the beam is tension controlled, transition, or compression controlled, so that then we can apply for the appropriate strength reduction factor. Therefore, Determining the value of C, which is the distance to the neutral axis, is very crucial. Please also note that it is recommended to provide nominal top reinforcement or minimum two numbers of rebar at the top section, such that stirrups can be tied up. This is for stability during pouring of concrete, even though beam capacity is enough and does not require for top bars. The stirrups or links, by the way, are necessary for shear reinforcement. So let's get into it. We use the same MathCAD format we did for a single reinforced beam. We just need to modify a bit to account for the additional compression force C prime. So let's try adding two numbers at the top with the same bar diameter, 29. And since we add two numbers at the top, we increase the bottom by two numbers as well. So we provide two numbers at the top Please ignore the extra rebars on the drawing. And six numbers at the bottom in two layers. So three here and then three here. This is to ensure adequate spacing and so that there's no congestion. So the effective depth is adjusted. And we also add the depth of the top bars, which is D prime. And we also add the area of reinforcement at the top. And this is also adjusted because of the additional rebars at the bottom. 
the value of beta 1 is not change, is unchanged. And for the strain, we add epsilon prime, which is at distance c minus d prime. And if we take the ratio and proportion, we get this equation. We also add fs prime. And we also add the additional compression force. So as you notice, the value of C did not change. That's because we added the same amount of steel at the top and at the bottom. But the value of our flexure or strength, the ultimate capacity, changed to 413 kilonewton meter, which is greater than the applied moment, 363. Math guide gives the value of 1 if the condition is correct and gives the value of 0 if the condition is not correct. So the applied moment is less than the moment capacity, so the beam is adequate to carry the applied load, so it's safe. So if you want to know the value of the forces, you can ask MathCAD to provide. So the tension force, I'll just ask MathCAD. Compression force. Compression force by concrete and compression force by uh, steel at the top section. The nominal moment. Let's change the unit. And we can also ask MathCAD what's the transition, uh, what's the value of the strength reduction factor, which is under transition zone because it's 0.887, and the value of our tensile stresses. So based on these values, these are greater than the yield strength. So the steel yields at tension side, and the steel also yields at compression side. So why is it important to know if the steel yields or not? It is important because we want the steel to yield or fail first before the concrete fails. When the concrete fails, it crushes, and that failure is a sudden failure, and we don't want a sudden collapse, whereas the steel gives us a ductile failure and it will give us enough time to prepare. We will see cracks forming first before the rupture. That's why in beam design we always aim for the steel to fail first by providing just enough amount of steel. When the concrete crushes before the steel yields, then it means that the beam is overly reinforced. Having said that, ACI code specified limits for the steel ratio, which is the ratio of the steel area to the beam effective area. There's a minimum ratio and then there's a maximum ratio that needs to be satisfied. The minimum is to ensure that there are no unserviceable cracks and the maximum is to ensure that ductile failure is achieved and the beam or the structure is not overly reinforced. So let's check the steel ratio. So as for ACI code, the maximum steel ratio is defined as 3 over 7 times 0.85 F prime C times beta 1 divided by F1. This ensures a ductile failure. And also ACI defines the minimum to be the minimum value of this two that gives us 0 0.00377. The actual steel ratio at the bottom bars is this one, and the actual steel ratio at the top bars is this one. But since it's a double reinforced beam, we take the effective. We can also use the formula, which gives us the same value. So based on these results, we can say that the reinforcement provided is within steel ratio limits.